In this video, I'm going to go over 10 tips I wish I knew sooner with Godot. Tip number one, when you're using sprites in a pixel art game, your sprites will initially be blurry until you change the import settings. So double click the sprite, go to import, preset, 2D pixel, and re-import. Now the sprite is going to look crystal clear. And for this to apply to all sprites in the future, click preset, set as default for texture, and hit save. Now all your future sprites will also be clear. Next tip is going to be about using sprite sheets in control nodes. So here's a dice, and this is the sprite sheet for that dice. And if we use a typical sprite, as you can see, it's blue here, and all the other control nodes are green, so it's not going to abide by the containers rules. So if you wanted something that does abide, you would create a texture rect, you would add the dice sprite, and normally texture rects don't allow splitting up of the sprite in the same way that the sprite node does, but you would actually create an atlas texture, and then drag the sprite, and then set its width and height of the size of each frame, and then set the x value to be the x multiple of each frame, and now you have the sprite sheet working within the control nodes um, as a single frame. And let's center this and it seems to be working. So another tip is going to be about size flags. So this is a pretty useful little parameter in the control nodes that's, that I didn't know about for a long time. So let's say we wanted each of these um, three control nodes to be equally spaced out. How would you do that? So you'd come, you'd highlight them all, come to size flags, you'd vertically fill and expand, or just vertically expand. And playing around with these settings is going to help you understand more or less how each control node within a container occupies its space. So they're all occupying um, maximum space, not layout full rect. Okay. Next tip is going to be about buttons and corner radius. So buttons start out square. If we override the style by giving it a new panel. You can come over to corner radius and give it some corners. And I'm just going to give it a little border, make things easier to see. You can see that with these rounded edges, you get a more stylish looking button. Okay, next tip is going to be about getting your um, assets to look a little bit more pixelated as opposed to high resolution. So as you can see, this car is pretty pixely. That's because in the project settings, we come over to window display, it's set to viewport. So if we set it to 2D and we run this, we're gonna get the actual high resolution 2D version of this model that it that it is. Um, but if we wanted it to always snap to whatever pixel resolution that we have, in this case I'm using a pretty low resolution, you would set it to viewport window display mode. And now we get that crispy pixely look, which is good for certain theme styles. Okay, next I'm gonna go over auto loading. Auto loading is when you preload certain scenes or scripts before the game starts, before any scene starts. So for example, with this car, we have this speed constant. Let's say we wanted that to actually be something that's global that might change over time, depending on what's happening. So let's say we wanted to use this global speed of 200. So how would this car access that variable? We would come to project settings, go to auto load and auto load that script. And now we come over to the car scene and we search for globals, we'll be able to access the globals that we just auto loaded and grab its speed variable. And now the car should be much faster. So in the same way, you can also auto load scenes. So if we come to, to Blogman, let's say Blogman wanted to use the text box scene to say something. So 
that's a good use for having the text box be global so that anything can use the generic text box scene. So I'll come to project settings and we'll open up the text box scene as an example. And now we're auto loading a scene. So if we run this and we come over to remote, which is going to give us a glimpse of what's happening and what's loaded, we've got our global script and we've also got our text box scene that we just loaded. And if we come to the script and I call this text box, we should be able to access this global text box scene that we've auto loaded, which is very useful. Um, next is a something that I wish I knew sooner, which is that Godot has this change scene um, default function in the tree. So if you want to change scenes, you can just call get tree dot change scene. Let's say I have a black screen that I want to change to from blogman. Um, if we come over to remote, we're currently on the blogman scene. I press down. Now we are on the black screen. So we've successfully changed scenes using this change scene function. All right. Next, we're going to go over linear versus cubic interpolation. So we've got a character here that's moving around in a linear fashion, which means that it moves at the same rate from beginning to end during, during movement and during interpolation. So if we change this from a linear movement to a cubic movement, you'll notice that um, it moves in a different way. It moves in a, along a different curve. It's um, a little snappier. It's a little more natural looking and juicier. So this could be a great improvement for certain game looks. And this could be also applied in the animation player. All animations by default use a linear movement. So this is enlarging in a linear way. If you change it to cubic, then you can change the curve to be cubic. So oftentimes cubic is, is the way to go for, for interpolation. Next tip is going to be about the modulate variable. So if you come back to blogman and come to visibility, you could modulate its color with the modulate variable. So let's say this, this guy is poisoned or uh, low health. You can also, another very useful one is to modulate the alpha. So, you know, slowly dying is modulating, is it's changing the modulate of the alpha down to zero. Um, maybe completely black. Um, one of the limitations is that you cannot be a completely um, any singular color because it's always going off of the base color, except for black, of course. But let's say you want it to be completely uh, white or red. I'll show you um, how to do that. This is um, a little bit complicated, but I'll let you research it more on your own. You would basically use a shader. So you do new shader, shader, new shader, click into it, and it would be a canvas shader. It's a, calling the fragment function, and we're just going to grab the um, current color of the sprite, and then set its RGB values to be um, whatever RGB you want. So for white, that would be um, 1, 1, 1, or you could just do vector 3 of 1. And so, boom, everything's white. Um, let's see, you want it to be red. That would be R, G, B, like that. Um, so I'll let you play with this um, and research it more on your own, but can be useful um, when the modulate is not enough. And for the final, final tip, it's going to be, this is something that I didn't know about for a long time, but it's basically default fonts. So, this font right here is not the Godot default font. That's because I set a custom one in the project settings so that any future text that the game reads is going to be using the default font instead of setting it to something each time. And the way you would do that is you would create a new dynamic font, font data, you pass it your TTF font, and then you would save this font resource as something. Let's say um, my font resource. Then you come to the project settings, general. You'd search for font. 
and you would change your custom font here to be that custom font resource. And then for the rest of the project, it will be using that custom font, which can save a lot of time. Okay, and the last little, little fun tip is um, if you go to editor settings and theme, you can actually change the Godot default editor theme, which can be a fun way to to mix things up and um, you know just play around with a new new theme. It can be pretty cool. Alright, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye.